We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This is Cheryl from Jajawarong Country. Hello and welcome to episode 87 of the Beyond 90 podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, whether you're listening through the various podcast platforms, Joy Radio or Clutch Radio, we really appreciate your support. Now, the number 87, potentially unlucky if you're an Australian that's into cricket, but obviously, hopefully nothing bad befalls us. I'm Eric Subihano, uh, hosting the pod once again in Cheryl's absence. Uh, we hope everything's okay with you, Cheryl. And I'm joined by uh, a real dynamic duo, firstly, uh, Magella Card from Queensland. How are you yeah. going out, th- out there? Real good. Real good. Um, it stopped raining and um, having a good time. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we love it when it's f- now that it's finally stopped raining. Now, uh, quite appropriate given that it came on Thursday that Madge is from Brisbane and Dale Roots is from Canberra originally. Lloyd now lives in Sydney like me. So how are things going, Dale? Yeah, good. Good weekend of football. Uh, yes. Finally drying out all of the clothes and damp out of the apartments. Yes. Um, but yeah, finally, finally seeing some sunshine, which has been very good. Yeah, it's been very good indeed. So uh, once again, we'll continue the um, habit started by Cheryl of shouting out the Matilda whose cap number matches the episode number. So we are up to episode 87 and cap number 87. This is a Louise McMurtry made her Matilda's debut in 1995 and ended up with 31 appearances for the green and golds uh, described as one of the absolute champions of the game, a legend from Queensland who steered a number of youth and senior state sides to the top, a born organizer, marshalling the back line, ensuring morale on and off the field is tip top. She would have been in the first QAS sides and Louise was at the recent Matildas versus USA game. She hasn't changed a bit. So certainly wherever you are, Louise, we hope you're doing fantastically well. So on to basically the really the business end of the season. But first, um, there was one final uh, regular season game to play, and it was one final edition of Thursday Night Football. So a three-all draw between Brisbane Raw and Canberra United at wherever James Drysdale Reserve is. Uh, Madge, did you end up going? No, I didn't. It is the first Brisbane Raw home game that I've missed since like 2017 or something. Mm. So yes. unfortunately, um, because they couldn't end up playing at Perry Park, they had to take it to uh, to Pine Hills FC again uh, with a with an early kickoff time, of course, because of the, um, the lighting situation, mm-hmm. um, not being yes. up to scratch for yes. the broadcast. So no, I couldn't get away from work, but um, but managed to scoot home quickly and um, and catch most of it on TV. And mm-hmm. yeah, you know what? To end to end a season, why not? Let's just have some um, uh, a, a three three nil, uh, sorry, three nil three or draw with uh, with a Michelle Heyman hat trick. So uh, that's what we like to see between Brisbane and Canberra. I, I prefer a win, but. Um, some cracking goals in there as well. I mean, the yes, first goal that, uh, that Larissa Crummer got off just a, a beautiful little outside of the foot through ball from Katrina Gorey after she did it like really uh, some great ferreting work to get the ball back in midfield uh, and then just put through that that killer assist for that um, Larissa Crummer absolutely buried uh, into the, oh, let's say, top of the net, maybe not quite top of the net, but mm-hmm. a, a very, very nice goal. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to be honest. I thought that Canberra were going to be uh, once kind of Gory got the two assists. I kind of thought I think we might be shipping a few goals here mm-hmm. after each Nori scored, and then Heyman just you know turned on the style. Um, we could talk about the defence for Brisbane mm-hmm. for two of her goals, but mm-hmm. I mean it is it is what it is. I think defence is optional at this in this match. I don't yes. know why defenders were even played. Uh, very boring <laughs> tactically. Don't like it. Um, and you know we'll what? I think, letters. I think we all were hoping for someone to just go on a run and take the golden boot since the um, the A League had already announced that Fiona Wirtz had taken the the, yeah. um, the, the golden boot. It was like, <laughs> it was like, come on, Larissa, come on, Michelle, someone, someone just <laughs> get up there and 
take it off her, but no, it was it wasn't to be. Yeah, shades of yeah. Sydney having to celebrate the premiership before the semi final. Yes, uh, indeed. We'll, yes. Get on, we'll come on to that later. Um, we, good to see. We will. Uh, good to see Megan McKellar get, get a goal. I mean, she had a fairly yeah. unhappy time at Canberra United. Um, mm-hmm. Famous for scoring fifty goals in an MPL Queensland season. Yeah, um, I think and she, it, she may have also been. Um, I'm not sure if it was her or Abby Lloyd ended up being Golden Boot of the um, uh, FQPL. Uh, in Queensland here last season as well for Western Pride. So, yeah, it was great to see her um, finally mm. get that A-League women's goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was kind of thinking of that when when I saw, okay, you know, obviously not great to throw away the three points, not that it really matters at the end of the day, but, um, yeah, kind of disappointing that uh, that we let the, the lead slip. But I think it was a nice, as, as I said, it's a nice story that, like, you know, she kind of came to Canberra. She didn't, I don't think she really got a chance mm. to kind of show her wares. She was obviously very talented in the in the um, Queensland competition. But, yeah, really good on her, the, as I said. And, and another, you know, another three goals for Heyman puts her up to what, like? Nine. She's got to be up to 90. Ooh. She's to, sorry, she's got to be up to 80. For, no, okay, uh, she, Ailey. yeah. So the, uh, that's right, Dale. So the first one was her 80th, and now she's on yep. 82. So yes. Yeah. So there you go. She's she's streaking away, which is which is good to see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a, fu- a fun game all in all. Yep. Um. Of course, I love play scoring against their former club. So, th- yes. uh, thank you so much, Megan McGilligott. Uh, it was a Michelle Heyman perfect hat trick as well. One with yes. the left foot, one with the right foot, one with the head, just like um Larissa Crummer against Newcastle, I think. And then um. There also, was... uh, the original, also the original meaning of a perfect hat trick. Three, oh, go- yes. three consecutive goals. Just like the Rissa Cromer. Apparently, mm-hmm. there's an even more insane meaning of, I think in Germany it was, the they had their original definition of a hat trick was even more insane, which was had to be three consecutive goals in the same half, which Michelle Heyman did. So whatever yeah, way you look well. at it, it's a hat trick. <laughs> less, less efficiency from the Germans, I say. Yes. <laughs> Okay, now um, I was pu- I was a little bit puzzled by the keeper sub, although it's I mean we all love seeing dub debuts. So congratulations to Christina Esposito, who got a run out straight after Michelle Heyman completed her hat trick, and her first job was to pick the ball out of the net when yeah, Megan McKellar got scored. <laughs> yes, so yes. Well, I mean, I mean it's, as you say, it's yeah. good to good to get her out. And I think it was Katie Offer that got a run out a couple of weeks that ago. That is true. And- yeah, uh-huh. we've seen we've seen a few of these this season, but I, yeah. you know, yeah. in, in games where the kind of the results doesn't matter or the results decided, mm-hmm. I think yeah. it's really good that, yeah. that we get the, yeah. these kids a run. Yes, I believe also Koka Mystorovic has gotten a run for Melbourne City, and mm-hmm. um, there was another keeper sub which we will get to because mm-hmm. yeah. it was the in what the semi final uh, yes. the yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, First, the game between first and second after the regular season to decide the first team into the grand final. Sydney FC, the Premiers, are uh, now hosting the grand final in two weeks' time after a f- after the game that literally had everything. A 4-2 yeah. win after extra time over Melbourne City. And uh, Dale and I were lucky enough to be in the box at, media box at Jubilee Stadium for this game because some allegedly important more important people didn't turn up well it's their loss so dale yes. um where do we begin with that game um i i think there's a lot of things that melbourne city can take out of the loss mm-hmm. i think that they were really dominant for probably 65 minutes mm-hmm. until uh after after wilkinson's second goal scored that first goal in the first half second goal um like you know caught Sydney ball watching was a really quality finish Mm -hmm. but I think that um about five minutes after that they really hit a wall and Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that would be they pressed really high in the first half Mm -hmm. um and pressed really constantly in the first half but um yeah after about five minutes after that they just kind of lost their way a little bit um and then really from then till the end of extra time uh, I mean it was kind of after Vine scored the first goal, it really felt like it was just a matter of time before Sydney scored a second. Yes. Um, and obviously they scored the second in stoppage time. Um, but yeah, I think that City, City, you've got some things to worry about next week. They have to play, they have to play 120 minutes this week. Obviously mm-hmm. they've got two, two weeks, uh, sorry, two days in reserve. Mm-hmm. But they're going to be missing a few players and yeah, Melbourne victory look really up for, really up yep. for the next match. But yeah, I mean, they say that, 
you know, you can't always win pretty and the best teams find a way to win. And I think that that really was exemplified by Sydney in this game. They found a way to make it work. Yeah. They also found, uh, they had 27 shots on goal. Sydney had 27 shots on goals and, and it didn't feel like that in, in the first half. So yeah, that second half, it did. Yeah. It just became the Sydney show and um, just really peppering the city goal. And, um, and I, I was annoyed. I, I was, I was, Bigging up Melissa Barbieri um, mm-hmm. <laughs> early on in the first half because she's had an absolutely um, fantastic uh, season, mm. um, especially considering that she's been behind Micah and um, and Williams for a, a few seasons mm-hmm. now. And to come back in to be the starting keeper and just be excellent this season. But, um, yeah, a few brain fart moments, I think, um, mm-hmm. um, from Barbieri. It's, it's spe- especially the handball outside the box yeah. When they were four two down, four two down. It's just um, you're already a down a player. Um, yeah, you do you do want to, and you know you it, it's instinctual. I guess you see the ball, you, you go out mm. to to try and try yep. and um stop it. But pretty pretty disappointing way, I think. Um, and hope and she'll be hoping that it's not the end of her season. Yes, yeah. uh, yeah. that's a good point. And I mean, like the the fact that you make about it being instinctual, like yeah, that's true. But kind of you've because Sydney had played so quickly to get to that point, Wyman had that really goal, good ball out to Rojas. She put the ball across to, I believe it was Vine. Vine went to play it over her. Like there's 30 seconds leading up to that where you've kind of got to take a breath and kind of reel in the adrenaline. Mm-hmm. And I know yep. that's obviously, I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not going to tell people how to do their jobs, but you've, you kind of have to think like, okay, there's a bit, you got to have a bit of situational awareness. I feel, I felt really sorry for her. Mm-hmm. She looked obviously really disappointed, but I mean, it wasn't necessarily the fact that Bubs was the one to come off. It was also that they had to sacrifice Policina. Yeah. So that meant that at that point, as he's saying, like they were two goals down, Bubs goes off, they lose Policina. They don't have anybody really else on the bench that they can bring on to kind of make mm-hmm. a difference at that point. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think the game was well and truly gone by then, but she really, I mean, that error really took it out of their hands. Yeah. So you do hope because it's um uh, next their next game is Sunday right so it's a bit more than a week so yeah Sunday that'll help him. yep so that'll help with the recovery um also I do believe Melissa Barbieri's red card offense is a one game ban so yes. she will be back if City make the grand final at least also I commit uh, thoughts with uh, Tyler J Vlinich who um had the rare um double of um a bad injury that. Need, needing her to leave the field and getting sent off at the same time. So, that was a yeah. that was a pretty bad injury too. Yeah, she landed yeah. f- fair and square on yeah. the back mm-hmm. of Vine's ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're kind of landing with all of your yeah. weight plus yeah. the fact that you're jumping into a tackle, yeah, yeah. I hope that she's all right. Yeah. So um, there, at the very least for City, like um, they do do have two capable replacements for the sent off players. So Sally James will go in goal, you'd assume, and uh, mm-hmm. she's you know they will know from the time at Canberra. She's yeah. a very highly talented keeper, and also Chelsea Blissett, you'd assume, would be the obvious choice to replace Tyler J. Vlinich on the left side of City's formation. Um, yeah, uh, well, I mean, we could keep talking about this game forever. I loved. City's first goal, my God, that was cruel on Nat Tobin. Like the what yeah. the how much she's I feel like she's made less than five mistakes all season. Yeah. And then just one of them just involves teeing it up for, for Hannah Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. Um loved Courtney Vine's first goal, like the first goal from Sydney. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. That's yep. lovable bullet header. Boom. Yep. Mm. Ah, yep. So and also um Melbourne City second goal. Rebecca Stott was just made made everything, just the run. Yeah to provide the option for whoever it was, might've been Vlinich on the left side, then just very calmly holding the ball up for, like she had to hold it up for a while so that McKenna could make that run because I think Stoddy had got the jump on the rest of her teammates. But once yeah. it had gone through, McKenna, who's, I think, seriously underrated, uh, you know, played basically, it was set it up beautifully for Wilkinson. But then, uh, yeah, Sydney's goals. I noticed they were all scored by substitutes. So two for Courtney Vine, one for Cote Rojas, one for Sarah Hunter. So I think uh, we were speaking in the box, you know, I think Dale and I and, uh, you know, friend of Beyond Night, Samantha Lewis, about, yeah, how it m- might have been suboptimal for City to build a squad with only four attackers. Well, yeah. Sydney FC have many attackers, including, I think, some dressed in suits in the stands that couldn't even make the squad. So, 
yeah, I think when you can bring on players like that, it's just, you know, that's yeah. the kind of thing that can make the difference in these big games. And the thing with Vine, like spe- Vine specifically, like obviously I think Satchel was, uh, she, she, like they didn't make any changes. Satchel kind of, mm. you know, she was fairly ineffective in the first half. But I mean, in saying that it felt a little, I was thinking about this earlier today. Satchel's inclusion in the starting lineup felt a little bit kind of rope dope like basically just ran them ragged, try to run yeah. around a lot, mm-hmm. ran the defense, try to pin the defense back. Um, and they would have known that with Satchel defending against Vlainich on that left-hand side, that obviously she's going to be able to get up and back. And they would have, by the sounds of things, planned to have effectively yeah. Vlainich pinned for 90 minutes. And mm. if they aren't able to pin her as a as, like in the defensive half, then to be able to at least have fresh legs to track her for 45 minutes at a time. Yeah. Obviously, Vine being a very much more capable attacker than, than Satchel, as we've seen this season, I think that really played into that tactic. And then by the time that Vine came on, as you guys said, like that run down the right hand, the, the run that forced Vlanic to take the tackle to get sent off, she had that run down the right hand side where she blazed into the crossbar. Yep. Those fresh legs playing against somebody who had played, a, you know, a full game. Uh, and then coming up against Blissett, who didn't have any real game awareness at that point, just basically, you know, like that right-hand side for Sydney was was on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, I think Princess Abini had a pretty poor match. She only had, mm-hmm. I think, 11 passes at mm-hmm. halftime. Um, and we were talking about that in the box. But I think that the tactic was fairly obvious to try and kind of run as much stuff down that right-hand side at flying edge as possible. And then knowing that they would be able to switch Satchel out if need be. Yeah, and it's I think it's worth noting, not just two goals for Courtney Vine, also involved in both red cards. So yeah. I think... The, the A-League women knowing what um, now experiencing what NPL New South Wales has experienced for a while, just the sheer terror of just seeing seeing this um, little lightning fast redhead coming at you. So yeah. it's good. And now, I think now, that I, I, yeah. it won't surprise me if she's not in the league next year. Put it that way. Yo, I think yeah. she's more than Jewish, more than Jewish yeah. stint overseas. Yeah, I think and I also think Sydney Olympic need to do some scouting for forwards very quickly as well. Yeah. Well, on that True. on that point. Because uh I, her agent is, I believe, the same she, she says an agent with Winnie Heatley, who's already been overseas and who was, mm. again, fantastic uh, for City at the back. But yeah, I mean, I think they're doing Everyone's yeah. doing everything to make sure she's not playing NPL New South Wales starting next month, I reckon. Yeah. And I hope Winnie Heatley's okay as well because she had. Um, mm. Yes. She went down as well and, the, and was taken off, uh, I think, late in the game. I'm not sure if it was during extra time or not. But um, yeah, hopefully she'll pull up okay for the next game. Yeah. Yep. So, Madge, how do you feel about seeing all these ex raw players doing well for other clubs? Oh, look, if it's City or a victory, what's, I mean, we're just a development pipeline for Melbourne. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's horrible. It's, it's well, it's, it's, it's horrible because you, you'd, you'd like to think that raw might do a bit of a, a better job of hanging on to some of these players. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Um, it's effectively the opposite of what like Brisbane and the Gold Coast is for like old Victorians. Yes. Like yes. <laughs> young Queenslanders go to Melbourne to have their turn playing football. Old, yep. And we trade old Victorians who will go to AFL games and complain about the humidity. Mm-hmm. And of course, Courtney Vine as well, a Bris- former Brisbane Raw player. Yes. And yeah. Power. Yes. And um, she did. She's been in New South Wales for a while, but even Courtney's had a um, season in NPL Victoria with Heidelberg United. So, I mean, it seems to be something you just can't avoid. So, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. It's great. It, that's that's <laughs> what the, And that's why I'm here, Madge. Because um, I can't annoy Thanks, Cheryl. It's I can't this annoy kind of Cheryl homely in. content. That but you know what? For. It, for, for when I've got neutral games like this, it just means I can sit there and just sit there and, and openly love Winnie Heatley and um, and Caitlin Torpy when they're playing um, and yell at anyone who says that they liked them more before I did. So Yes. And, uh, uh, yes, so... Um, Moving on to something that made me sad, I suppose. It's about time. So Sunday's elimination final at Hindmarsh Stadium. Adelaide United 1, Melbourne victory 2. The championship defence is still alive. So did, I mean, did either of you watch the full game? Because I've only yeah. watched the mini. Weird I've game. only watched, the, yeah, weird game. I only yeah. watched the full second half, but Madge, you were saying, sorry? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, so I watched the game, but it, yeah, it was, it was one I was really looking forward to and, and I think Amy Chapman on com- commentary sort of was talking about a lot in, in the second half. Adelaide just looked really flat. Um, mm-hmm. Like, and, and I'm not sure why, because, I mean, if, if you look back at 
uh, the the games leading in, victory are the ones we've probably had the more torrid time with um, uh, close games uh, recently um, and, and affecting, you know, they, they almost didn't make the finals, um, you know, contributing to that poor run into finals. But, yeah, I'm not sure if it was um, stage fright or just not not sure how to handle, you know, a, a finals game for Adelaide, but they, they just didn't seem to have... Um, that attacking spark, I think that we were expecting uh, from mm. this game, and and yep. and and to be fair, I mean, victory looked absolutely up for it. So yep. uh, it, it wasn't quite the game I was expecting, but still, um, still, that Sasaki goal was a uh, oh, price yes. of admission. Malto Bene. When it just floats, and it's like it's it's not going fast, but it's just floating, and yeah. it's going over, and Casey can't get to it, and it was you could see Casey Dumont's, a... you could see her face drop, just being yeah. like, oh no, <laughs> yes, and she's the the tallest player, she's the tallest goalkeeper in the league, I think, and she was yep. all at sea. There was n- she had no hope of stopping that. Yep. And, okay. and then the other goals as well. I mean, Leah Privatelli had a fantastic game. Um, uh, with first goal and then absolute peach of a, a, a pass for um for the second goal into um uh, Melina Ayers. Welcome back, Melina. Yeah. Um, who who took it wonderfully? Um, even though she wasn't tracked, so yeah, you could uh, absolutely talk about Adelaide's defence there on on the second goal as well. But uh, uh, just a you know great run and um and assist and finish. Um, so yeah. I think yeah. I think the 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 thing with Adelaide, I think the point that you make about like just being so disappointed by this performance was every time they went forward, they just looked completely out of ideas. Mm-hmm. Like usually they were playing like you've got that front four of like Dorble Wirtz, Hodgson, uh, Dorble Wirtz, uh, Holmes, and Condon, who have been so good all season, and then they can't score, and it's just like okay, so where do goals from open play come from? We they just had no answer. I think that was as much due to the kind of, I think they were a little bit overwhelmed. I think they were outcoached as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But also I think victory's midfield kind of really came into its own in this game. You had really quality control of the match, both through kind of Jackson Chidiak and Eliadis through the match, but also like Bunch being able to step forward into that hole and like collect the ball if there wasn't a defender there, Mm -hmm. play it out wide if need be. Um, And I think, as you said, I think that, Adelaide, once they kind of realised that plan A wasn't going to work, which was like all season, they like they had a 15, I think they had 15 better goal difference than, uh, than victory this season. Mm. But once plan A failed, like plan B just didn't materialise. There was that one moment where Shay Evans took the ball, she got the ball cut in on the right, oh, cut in on her right from the left flank and took a ping. And that was like the only meaningful shot that they had for probably the last half an hour. And the point mm. that you made about Amy Chapman's commentary, after that, she just said, Adelaide aren't playing with enough intensity. And that mm. was exactly right. They were just kind of hoping that something would happen, giving the ball to someone who would usually make something happen, but getting closed down. But I mean, even then they were, they, they weren't even completing passes, like just, yeah. and, and the, and the crowd, it was like, it was one of those, it, it's one of those things when they're, they're playing in front of a home crowd and, and, they're just missing their players and the, the crowd just starts groaning and it was just like, oh mm. no, this isn't this isn't great. It's what it's not what you want for your first finals, but you know, maybe it's what sometimes what you get when it's your, you you work so hard to um to uh, break through that barrier, get get through to the finals next time. I guess it's another learning experience for them to um um to think about, you know, how they approach this game and um you know what they felt and so they can come back bigger and stronger uh next time. But yeah, a bit a bit disappointing for the for the fans there, but um, you know, we've got the same That's old life. story: victories, uh, Sydney and City. Yes, yeah. The yeah. Last Next team week's going to be a cracker. Yes. Um, also want to point out because uh, you mentioned Leah Privatelli's great assist. A uh, friend of Beyond Ninety, Catherine Zimmerman, with the assist for Privatelli's goal, and I don't know how she found the angle for that mm. pass, but she surely did, and. Yeah, that's so. I mean, that was another great one. Um, you know, my train of thought's gone, but so we'll just go on to. I suppose are we game for predictions for the preliminary final on Sunday? Because I mean, we all know who I'm tipping, so it's going to be an interesting one. Um, City obviously not going to be at full strength. 
Um, but in saying that, I think the matchup between uh, the matchup really between kind of Stott, Wilkinson, and the Melbourne Victory back three or mid middle back three is going to be mm. super interesting. Mm. Um, but also the I think the other and less apparent one will be the battle of the wing backs to see mm-hmm. who will be able to push further forward. Mm-hmm. One of the hallmarks of City's mm-hmm. match last night of Friday night was the fact that Vlinic and the other fullback whose name escapes me. Torpy. Were basically uh, yeah, Torpy were basically mm-hmm. like in line with the strikers at some points when, mm-hmm. when they were kind of looking to move yes. the ball out. And that's been a real hallmark of yep. Friday Vigicic's time at City. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting with uh, Doran and Nevin, whether mm-hmm. they'll be able to pin those players back and be able to f- perform as well in attack as well. Yep. In saying that, I think Victory have got the edge in this one. And mm-hmm. I think that their fans will probably turn up as well. So, yes, because yeah. um, Victory tickets have... Tickets are available. Fans. Please go and buy tickets. Please, all of you. But yes, it, it, it occurred <laughs> to me, Victory... Have fans. Moving on. Yeah. So um, now, but oh, you make. I also make a good tactical point about City's formation because it's um, they need those wing backs, if you will, like really to push up as often as possible, just to take the load off. You know, Hannah Wilkinson, Rana Polisina, Tish McKenna, and otherwise they get too narrow and easy to stop. So it's a big job for Chelsea Blissett, who's highly, who's high quality, but um, still. Re- really not at hundred percent after that ACL, which kept her out of last season. Mm. But yeah, so that's, those are very key battles. Um, yeah. So victory on the edge match. Did you give a prediction? Would you oh, like I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think victory, you'd have to say they've got some mojo back after, mm. after a hard, a hard run of games. Um, I think Chidiac just looked really in control against Adelaide and, mm. Uh, so I think that'll be really interesting in the middle of the mm. park as well yes, yes. Um, to see who wins that battle because I, I think just what I really like about Chidiak is she's just so comfortable on the ball mm-hmm. in the same way that like a Katrina Gorey is that yep. um, in finals football when you're looking to you know wrestle control of the game those mm. sorts of players are yep. invaluable so mm. I'm going to give it the edge to victory for this one. Yeah, obviously I'm tipping Melbourne City because I refuse to tip against Tory Toomuth and Darcy Malone. But um, yeah, I actually, actually, if I was doing it properly, I'm probably agreeing with you. Uh, my the point came back to me. I mean, we've talked about victory schedule, but they actually had a seven day break for once, which mm, yes, I mean you could see and you can see what happens. Um, also, I also would not be surprised if um, Jeff Hopkins instilled the siege mentality over the past week into his players. Everything's against us, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We're away from home, etc. 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 And um, final point, Alex Shidiak, the one South Australian who was happy with what happened on Sunday. So good on you, Alex. True. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So it's time for our Aussies abroad roundup, and we'll start with the WSL and uh, your team, Dale. It's you're being spoiled because they won Everton won again. Yeah, well, I mean. It's nice to see one of the Everton teams winning because the mm-hmm. men's team absolutely honk at the moment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yes, goals to uh, th- sorry a three-two win over Leicester City for Everton. Goals to Tony Duggan and Anna Einvergard uh, in a three-two win. Perfield and Tierney for Leicester. Uh, Einvergard's second goal. If you've ever seen a player give them off give themselves up as offside more than this goal, <laughs> I would like to see it. Absolutely incredible. Basically, Ambergard flicked the ball past the keeper probably about three yards offside, but it was last touched by a Leicester player. Ended up being the winner, but she literally just turned around and like ran back to receive the free kick. And then the <laughs> referee blew the whistle. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, elsewhere, you had a uh, win for Man United over Reading uh, 3-1 at the uh, Reading Stadium or the Medeski Stadium. Uh, two oh, it's got a four. silly name now, but it's called the Medeski Stadium. The actual yeah, name is insane. Silly, silly car man stadium. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Select uh, car leasing stadium. Sel- that's Wonderful. right. Not like from, what's, what was the what was that? Yeah, from the country Arnold that brought Clark. you the Arnold Clark Cup. You have select car yeah, leasing more, stadium. Yeah, more cars. Uh, <laughs> Leah Galton, Alessia Russo for Man United, and uh, Deanne Rose for Reading. Uh, a goal, uh, the only goal for Manchester City for Carolyn Weir in their 1-0 win over Tottenham Ooh. Hotspur. She's on fire. Uh, she is. She is. Uh, early substitution out for Spurs uh, by Kai Simon. She started this game, but reports had it that she'd actually dislocated a finger uh, and had to be replaced after about 35 minutes. Uh, Hayley Rasso, I believe, score, uh, I believe assisted the goal for 
uh, for City. Match report said that she was quite good. Uh, the biggest result of the weekend, or the, the most fun result, uh, Chelsea won Aston Villa nil. Yes. Yes. with a 92nd yes. minute winner. Uh, which also precipitated Emma Hayes getting on the pitch. Uh, <laughs> Sam Kerr getting the kid off in the celebration as well. It looked was like a Renaissance painting. Goal, I think it was. Um, I think I read that somewhere. What, what was that? Sorry? I thought it was her 50th goal. Maybe did I read that wrong? Oh, there you go. Oh, so I think it was milestones start. all round. Yes. Oh, yep. well, we love to see that. Uh, well, that, I didn't know. But yeah, it was. It was. I there was. There were actual that. literal scenes. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I can't remember who was it. It was one of the um, Aaron Cuthbert put up on Instagram today. Yes. When you yes. want to get into the pub, but your mate wants to fight the bouncer, <laughs> where she's dra- someone's dragging Emma Hayes off the pitch. Yeah, and it's like Emma Hayes obviously overjoyed, but it, her facial expression, at least in the exact she looks moment, like the she's photo trying to punch on. Yes, yeah, like it's like that point yeah. where you're so ecstatic that your face can contort into something that looks like anger it was it was a <laughs> yeah. great photo but emma hayes i mean someone i mean obviously always gets emotional about her her team she loves her team so much and you saw it um sam kerr with the um least cared about yellow card of all time for yeah. this for yeah. the brandy chastain the yes. celebration but, giving yeah. the ref a thumbs up as she gets booked for <laughs> yes. uh we also had uh a 1-0 win for West Ham over Birmingham City. Birmingham almost certainly to go almost yeah. certain to go down at this stage. Yeah. Uh, they're 8 points behind Leicester in last place at the moment with an absolutely abhorrent goal difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, sorry, uh, Tamiki Yalop got about half an hour. She replaced mm-hmm. goal scorer Adriana Leon yeah. in the 61st minute. Uh, Arsenal 3, uh, Brighton and Hove Albion nil. Uh, goals 4. Let me just pull this one up. My apologies. Yep. Do, do, do. Come on, computer. You okay, so if it's it. going to wait. Oh, so oh, role reversal. Dale's, yeah, it's Dale's internet that sucks. So Why I've actually got it. This is, this yeah. is terrible. Okay, so um, newsflash. Stina Blackstenius, good at football. So she yeah, scored know, right. two of um, Arsenal's goals and Beth Mead scored the other one. Viviana Miedema, I haven't seen the footage, but they tell me she's playing in a kind of a deeper role now. To a she's dom- playing as a, a 10, comedy, effectively. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. um, yes. which was pretty... It, I mean, the, she's, she provided an assist for Blackstenius, I think it was last week or the week before. So but like Man her United? passing game or, is... I mean, yeah. Miedema's only like 24. Yes, I remember. She's yeah. still very young and she's yeah. already adapting into this number 10 role, which yeah. is just... Yeah. I think, honestly, I know this is a pretty hot take. I think Miedema are probably the best player in the world in like three years. I think there's yeah. like she's phenomenal at this point. Yep. Uh, but an assist for Caitlin Ford, who started yes. for this one, as did Steph Catley. Uh, yeah. uh, Liddy Williams still on the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, but big sad. Um, and yeah, yep. that's the Super League. Yep. So, uh, God, the other thing, the other goal by Beth Mead, assisted by Miedema, as we've discussed. Yeah. And uh, just on Miedema, I think I remember list, going through old podcasts, listening to uh, one of her interviews, and basically Miedema said, she, when she was young, she was a teenager. All right, I'm going to set a goal. I'm I'm going to score. Uh, I want to score 50 goals for my country. I want to score 50 goals for the Netherlands. She reaches, the, she achieves that at the age of 21, and it's like, oh, got to find a new goal. So yeah, she's she's just, the Netherlands yeah. all-time leading goal scorer, and she's like, you know, she's only in her early 20s. It's absolutely bizarre. She's a she's a phenomenon. Have, have a yes. huge amount of time for her. Also, a lovely person, which we yeah. love to see. Yeah. So uh, I think that's it. Although there were, you got all the six games a weekend just just for the, in the interest of complete this, there was a catch up game um, on the, uh, Friday morning, our time. It was West Ham United one, Chelsea four, uh, Chelsea's goals from uh, Penilla Harder, Neve Charles, Yona Anderson, and Sam Kerr. No surprise. Um, West Ham, West Ham strike coming from Dagny Brynjas dot here. So yeah, but that just, so I think the league situation, Arsenal, Five points ahead of Chelsea, but with but Chelsea have two games in hand, so three points for a win. If they Chelsea win both of them, um, they would move back in front. But as we've seen with fixture congestion and with Melbourne victory, um, fixture congestion can cause some very weird things. So, despite Chelsea's quality, far from guaranteed. And um, who is in third? Is it still Man United? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Oh yeah, it's, Man United, Man United, Spurs, and then City. City with a game in hand, in great form, and yeah, that's the race for third. Which, um, just to explain for people less familiar with the UEFA Women's Champions League, uh, top two in English Super League go through automatically to the group stage. Um, third is a playoff spot, and um, 
nothing's guaranteed despite the strength of this, this league as Manchester City yeah. will know when they got knocked out in the playoff stages by Real Madrid last time. So, yeah, so big race on for many things in England. Now, I'll move on to Scott. Yeah, it's uh, Scottish Women's Premier League. And uh, my um, usual message for Cheryl, it's um, a defeat for the one Australian in the Scottish Women's Premier League. So Jacinta Galabat, Galabatarachi's uh, Celtic lost 2-1 to Glasgow City. Uh, Jacinta, at least, it's good to see because she... She got a full game, and that's not always been a thing that's happened at the previous clubs that she's been at. So mm. she's starting on the regular, which is, you know, it's only good for her development. She's still pretty young. What, uh, early 20s? Just into She'd be, I, think she's 20, I think she's only 21. Oh, only 21. So, yeah. You know, this, so, I mean, some possibly tricky times earlier in her career, but good to see her getting that game time. Then on to France, where we had uh, Mary Fowler's Montpellier draw nil all away from home against PSG. That's a wonderful result. Mary Fowler played the first half. And then, um, of course, so the French, so in the French league, uh, the very dominant top two PSG and Ellie Carpenter's Olympic Lyonnais, but a big shock for Lyon as Mm -hmm. um, they could only draw one all with bottom of the table Saint-Étienne away from home. So, yeah, which is which is a huge, huge result for San Etienne. Not yes. a particularly strong women's side, mm-hmm. but uh, the, the the most successful club uh, in France. They have the most mm-hmm. domestic titles in mm-hmm. men's football, mm-hmm. uh, and also Lyon's biggest rivals in terms of geography. They are ah, just yes. down the road. Yes. Um, so yeah, huge result for them. Only their sixth point of the season, so their third draw. But yeah, really, really good result. Yeah. And also they took the lead. Um, yes, Mallory Millard did. actually had to had to pull the goal back for yeah. uh, Leon and shocks to nobody. Ellie Carpenter got booked in that game. Did she get so, booked? To fur. So I'm ninety minutes. So yeah. You know, nature is healing. Nate, yeah, I do like that. Um, so Aussie's getting slices of cheese all over the place, and it also happened in the Netherlands. So in the Dutch Cup, PSV four fire nor nil. Amy Harrison uh, played the last fifteen minutes. Uh, for PSV and got booked in the 90th minute. So Amy Harrison showing them, showing the Dutch how they do it in MacArthur. I love it. Very proud. Yes, <laughs> makes, makes me proud to be from Greater Western Sydney. So uh, no, no Australians played in Italy this week. They had a Coppa Italia weekend. Yes, and uh, uh, and Pomigliano had already been knocked out. Yes, that's right. And um, uh, PSV uh, have the Dutch league has an odd number of teams this year. So PSV have the buy. So they don't have a game next uh, this upcoming weekend, but then they're back in action the week after. So I think this is, it's been, a, it's time to end this chat the way they always do by nominating our Queens of the week. Oh, so sorry, Queens or Kings or non-binary legends of the week Amara. to give it its full and proper title. So I think we'll start with Mark of the week. Yes, that's the best term. So uh, Madge, uh, have you thought of someone for tonight? Yeah, I, we've already spoken about her today, but um, I'm going to go with Megan McElligot for uh, you know, breaking her um, W League, A League women's um, scoring, um, get, getting on the scoreboard for the first time. So it's, it's, I think it's something that's been coming for her. Mm-hmm. She And she also didn't get a huge amount of game time this season. I think she uh, you know, was off with illness and stuff um, mm-hmm. partway through this season as well. So mm-hmm. probably we didn't see her as much as, as we would have wanted to, which would have been um, nice to have a few uh, more attacking mm-hmm. options uh, of people who may have actually put the ball in the back of the net a few more times for mm. Brisbane this season. Yeah. Um, but great to see her actually just at the death uh, grab that first goal. Yes. Yeah, an important goal. Uh, Dale, who was your monarch of the week? Uh, in the country that actually does have a monarch, my queen of the week is uh, Patricia Guijaro from uh, the Barcelona women's team who clinched the third title in a row with a 5 0 win over rivals Real Madrid. Uh, Patrice scored what is probably the best goal of the weekend. Absolutely phenomenal hit from outside the area, just rocketed into the top left. Uh, really good crowd at the game, obviously, being a Classico. So uh, mm. great to see a good attendance and gives us a good idea of what it's going to look like when these two teams meet again in the Champions League uh, quarterfinals, which is only a couple of weeks away now. So really looking forward to that. 
Yep. Okay. So uh, Cheryl couldn't be here. Did want to give a belated International Women's Day shout out to Siren Sports, who gave us a shout out on International Women's Day. So thanks to everyone there. And uh, thanks to Danielle Warby, who um, uh, said some very kind words about us on her socials. Uh, I asked Stefan, who couldn't be here. He didn't answer. So I'm just going to assume he's nominated Carly Rusbacken. And uh, my queen of the week, uh, we're going to the second tier of New South Wales women's football. The foot, it's called the Football New South Wales League One Women's Competition. Don't ask. And my queen is uh, former Western Sydney Wanderer Jordan Baker from St. George FC. She scored uh, her third hat-trick in the opening four rounds of the competition. So she's already on nine goals for the season. Uh, it was a it was a much-needed hat-trick. It was against um, fellow uh, promotion rivals, uh, Northbridge, who have uh, quite a lot of uh, players with W League experience, so they really needed that. So, uh, well done to you, Jordan. Is is there promotion this week, uh, this year in the? Yes, Wednesday? yes, there is. So, um, they will, assuming we can actually complete yes, an NPL news, uh, state league New South Wales season for once. Um, so the format's currently twelve in the top tier, sixteen in the second tier, and they're going to even so up the numbers. So no relegation. 14. Yeah, 14 and 14. Yeah. So no relegation from NPL New South Wales women's. The top two go up from uh, football New South Wales League One women's, and yeah, that's how we'll get those two. So St. George FC, um, they're definitely among the candidates for that, thanks to Jordan's um, continued goal scoring. A hat-trick of hat-tricks, if you will. Hmm. So Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, supporting our lovely little podcast once again, whether you're doing it on Joy Radio, Clutch Radio, or via the various um, ways you can listen to podcasts. Um, uh, thank And thanks so much once again for putting up with my um, vibes-based hosting, Madge. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <you're>, you. <laughs> we All muddled. the vibes-based things, fantastic. <laughs> vibes-based <laughs> statistics, vibes-based <laughs> analysis. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, thanks so much for your um, intel, Dale, and for actually watching the WSL because I couldn't do it this week. Oh, look, I do my best. Yes. Somebody's got to keep this ship on the road. <laughs> yes, yes, it's not going to be me. Uh, so I'm Eric Subihano. Thanks so much, everybody, and we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks, guys.